My vision is growing. Everyone's worthy of healing. Allow for personal power reclamation and true healing. And then there will be different programs offered. And we create those resources after establishing an in-depth understanding of human consciousness. Let your vision be strong. Trust what you see. Let your journey go deep as the ocean. After four years of independent investments in the Implicit Revelations case study, new life was birthed into the cosmos through the creation of the Liberated Consciousness Healing Journey Course. Discover the unfathomable healing journey that led to these fresh developments through part one of the known documentary series. Explore more in the video description below. The following videos are from 2019 while creating the Liberated Consciousness course. Due to over 100 intensive health challenges, including multiple forms of severe amnesia, Kristen does not have explicit memories of the following experiences. Thankfully though, the implicit fragments of those experiences are now fully integrated through daily application of her own healing journey programs, including Near Play with Near Power. What did thousands of hours of implicit revelations lead to? Discover wondrous depths of healing liberation at kristenwindsor.com slash liberated. Okey-dokey, artichokey, spagokey, manokey, padokey. My vision is growing. Everyone's worthy of healing. And so if this up and down is our self-ceptions, or root of self-ceptions, and then the across are the protectors of self-ceptions, all we need to do is rewire the self-ceptions through growing uh, fresh attachments, basically. The intentions are supposed to start at the Moppet part, go to the Nightingale part, go to the Normal part, and then to the Guardian part. But if this is never nurtured, and love is never felt or able to be embodied in tangible experience, and if parts don't learn how to give love... Not just the illusion of love, but actual love. Parse don't learn how to give love by observing other people giving real love. And if the normal part is observing an absence of authentic love and considering that to be normal, then the core selfception is most likely to come from this part of consciousness because it's going to be the most developed. And that's where the pain of the world comes in. It all comes from attachments and attachment development. And so the Moppet part and the normal part, the up and down and the diamond, that's the root of self-ceptions. And the guardian part and nightingale part across here, that's the protectors of self-ceptions. And if we don't have a solidified sense of self here then this is going to take over. Let your vision be strong. Trust what you see. Let your journey go deep as the ocean. Allow for personal power reclamation and true healing of mental health battles. Or whatever way we want to describe it as. And then there will be different programs offered. You know, all of these, these different various things. Um, 
everything from healing despair to achieving empowerment and fulfillment. And we create those resources after establishing an in-depth understanding of human consciousness. One that actually understands the human mind rather than guessing from external behaviors observed through biased subjective perceptions. That brings us to another excellent point. What are the needs of parts? How, how do parts develop? What are their needs in order to be well developed and fully developed? For parts of consciousness to be fully developed is good. For parts of consciousness to be fully developed I know, doing all sorts of years. <laughs> this is amazing. For parts of consciousness to be fully developed, that's the language we'll use, means that they all have their needs met and they all have communication with one another. When that doesn't happen, the consciousness develops in something more like this. There's gaps. There's gaps in it. Then that means the parts don't have co don't have communication even within themselves. So for parts to be fully developed, and then for parts to have communication with one another, that's where that's where struggles come. That's where things can get a little chaotic, a little painful, a little disruptive. So for parts to be fully developed. The needs of the individual types of parts needs to be met. There's four types of parts. There's infinite number of parts. We all have infinite number of parts. But every single piece of stimulus and experience gets filed away in memories of parts. The memories just get reprocessed and pruned. But they all go into the memory of parts. Every piece of stimulus and experience. Every piece. No exceptions. And so parts need to have their needs met. And then on top of that, parts need to have communication with one another. And so one example is if there's not communication between the guardian parts and the moppet parts, then these parts of consciousness won't feel loved. As well, like one example, they might not feel loved because this is the part that experiences love and receives love and feels feels the experience of love and so if they don't have contact with one another then when this part is activated it's not going to remember consciously remember that there's love somewhere in the consciousness and likewise this part is all about providing safety and so if they're not in contact and this part becomes activated there's going to be all this vulnerability and not this conscious concept of being safe and feeling safe and secure. And so parts need to be developed within their, the, within their sector of, of type of part. And there's four types of parts. And then secondary, beyond that, in addition to, parts must have communication with one another. It just explains the you beyond the you you know so that you can have power within your experience by showing up for these parts you know like it just that's just insight that you get to use however you choose <laughs> you get to use however you choose i'm dr seuss now <laughs> the you beyond the you invites you to stay true <laughs> To the self beyond the section and the perceptions beyond self-ceptions. <laughs> Too much fun. And here's the beautiful thing, though. We now know with neuroplasticity that just because your mind is one way today doesn't mean you have to choose for it to be that way tomorrow. And I don't mean a literal tomorrow, but I mean a present and a future tense. Because brains don't get rewired overnight. But the point is, seeds can be planted and brains don't have to be unchangeable. We're malleable creatures. And so the goal of Healing Journey Homeschool would be to extend tangible experience of loving personal power reclamation towards your inner being through daily Healing Journey investments. And then there would be different programs for different needs, all addressing the different parts of consciousness. Parts tend to communicate most with the parts that next to them. So this part would have the most automated connection with this part here and this part here. 
okay? And likewise, this part here would have the most automated connection with this part here and this part here. And a big way that we heal is by extending that connection to the part across from it, the part that it has the least automated contact with. And so as an example, this part of consciousness will automatically have connections here and here. And so to heal this part, we reconnect it with this part. This part is going to have the most automated connections with this part and this part. And so to heal it, we connect it with this part. This part is going to have the most automated connections with this part and this part. And so to heal it, we connect it with this part. This part is going to have the most automated connections with this part and this part. And so to heal it, we connect it with this part. Extending those connections to all parts of consciousness. Every part has their own attributes. Every part has their own inclinations. Every part has their own strengths and gifts and skill sets. And every part has their own needs and wants and desires. And by identifying those and learning how the parts interact with one another and how that impacts our unfolding life experience, observable through our conscious awareness, which is represented by the heart, you know, there may be like a spark of energy in there, it could be the, the potential spark that we could plant, etc. But we can always build more connections between parts that we can reach through our conscious awareness. We have a few different aspects within the consciousness we're talking about. The blue diamonds here, 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 here. And the shape can change. This is just a working model. But whatever shape goes there to symbolize it, it could be you know, circles or, or circles within circles or diamonds within diamonds or a diamond or whatever. You know, we're playing. We're just playing. So we could do the diamond shape and then each corner symbolizes a different aspect of the part. Needs which would be like survival, basic needs just for sustaining the self or that part of the self. <laughs> um, and then another one of the four corners of the diamond within each part would be um, wants or desires. And these would be to thrive, not just survive. These would be advanced needs rather than basic needs. These would be to fulfill rather than just sustain. And then skill sets, strengths, abilities, um, assets would be another of the corners. <clears throat> and then the last of the four corners of the diamond of each part of consciousness or type of part of consciousness would be attributes, qualities, or characteristics. So each type of part has these four things that we go into in depth. Okay, so there's that. And then there's the lines between. There's the, the teal diamond. And this is what connects the parts. And so how do parts communicate? What's their relationship with one another within the subconscious? How does this part affect this part? How does this part affect this part? How do they affect one another? How do they communicate? What are their com communication modalities? What are their relationship styles with one another? And then... The conscious awareness would be self-state, and so that's like its own thing that we explore. It has its own aspect of neuropsychology, etc. How it develops, how much access we have to it, um, what role it plays in our power, in our experience, in our consciousness, um, what not, you know. And so that, too, would have, you know, like, skill sets and abilities and attributes, qualities, characteristics, um, whatnot, similar to the parts, um, but it wouldn't have its own, it could technically have its own needs and desires, but it's more so a personal power state. So instead of having its own like personality, it would have attributes of personal power. That's where our personal power lives. So personal power is here in self-state, which is the conscious awareness. And then the subconscious parts are what comprise aspects of our consciousness, personality, mental health, etc. Strongly contributing to, identif to identity without defining it. And then these yellow lines connecting the awareness to parts 
and the relationship to part. So like there's a line that connects directly to the little blue diamond and there's also a line that connects directly to the line within the teal diamond. And so this is the neural pathways and this is the way that the awareness develops a relationship to parts. <sighs> yeah, that feels right. Mm. I can share one more thing. We establish the names of parts. So all parts develop through love. So we've got the embodier of love. Embodying love develops Moppet parts of consciousness. And then we have the giver of love. So experiences of giving love develops the nightingale parts of consciousness. And then we have the witnesser of love. And so witnessing love develops the normal parts of consciousness. And then we have the champion of love. And so witnessing defensive, protector, champion type experiences of love. Or having a need to champion love, protect, defend, guard love. Will develop the guardian part. So witnessing these experiences and also experiencing the need for whatever attribute they carry, etc., develops the parts of consciousness through harnessing our personal power and using that to show up for the needs of parts, honoring their skill sets, etc. Infinite mic drops. <laughs> I know, right? It's like 4. Ah, it's like 4.20 a.m. Developing the miraculous inner being diagram of consciousness. <laughs>